The clutch in your motorcycle is an important component in the overall transmission system of your bike. It takes power from the engine and transmits it through to the rear wheels efficiently and makes shifting possible. But if your clutch is like my Suzuki DR650 and is actuated by a cable, well, occasionally it will need some adjustment throughout the season of riding. So today, I'm gonna show you how to do that simple adjustment and make sure that your clutch works perfectly all season long. So sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. If you look around the Tinker Shed today, keen observers might notice that some of the walls look a little bit different. And that's because my wife and I have taken it upon ourselves to do some insulation inside the Tinker Shed for a number of reasons. One is really energy efficiency in the winter when I'm heating it. It's gonna take us a few weeks to do this. And I think if you're interested, at the end of this project, I'll put a little bit of a summary together and maybe walk around how I have my shop laid out to make the most of the 20 by 12 space that is the Tinker Shed. So if you're interested in a video like that, leave a comment down below. Today, I want to address a comment that I got a couple weeks ago, which was an interesting comment. And it was, hey, I really love your videos, but can you do something on the DR that doesn't involve taking the whole bike apart. And I thought that's kind of an interesting comment. Uh, a lot of my channel was really focusing on tackling some of the projects that might be a little bit intimidating and walking people through step by step. That's been my goal sort of all along with this channel, whether it's the DR or the Skidoo or whatever. It's giving reference material. However, I never really thought about um, someone may be really new to motorcycling or skidoos or whatever and wants to know the basics. They, they're not interested in redoing the top end on an engine, but they do want to know basic maintenance and basic setup. Today's video, I thought what I would start with is how to adjust your clutch free play. I want to talk a little bit about how your clutch works so you understand it but then show you how to properly adjust your clutch so that you get the maximum life out of the clutch discs and steels, you get the best enjoyable, safest operation of the motorcycle that you can have. So that's what we're gonna do today. If you have other suggestions out there on really simple things, I'm thinking maybe you know how to clean the air filter. I know I have a video on total maintenance, but maybe just simple things on here that you think a new rider or a new owner might be interested in, please also leave a comment down below. Let's get started looking at the how, how your clutch interacts. Okay, let's do it. Whew. So you're new to the DR650 and you want to know how to adjust your clutch. The first thing you may want to know is where exactly does this clutch reside and what do I need to know about it? The clutch pack itself on a DR650 sits here behind this cover and it's actuated by this small control lever right here when you pull in the clutch lever in your left hand. Now the purpose of any clutch that's on a motorcycle, whether it's a multi-disc wet clutch like this one, a dry clutch, or even a double clutch like the Africa Twin that is now out there, the, the real purpose of it is to allow the operator or the motorcycle itself to divorce the transmission from the engine over here and allow smooth starts and stops and shifts between gears. Without a clutch, you really wouldn't be able to stop the bike because it would always be in gear or it would be exceptionally difficult to time it to get it into neutral when you come to a stop. So a clutch is something you absolutely need. This is, as I said, is a multi-disc wet clutch. And what that means is 
The clutch pack itself is constructed from multiple discs of both friction material and what they call friction steels. And it is under spring pressure um, so that they sandwich together really tight. When the spring pressure is applied, the clutch locks the transmission to the engine. And when you squeeze the lever, it feeds in free play in between the discs, allows them to slip, and that way um, you can come to a stop and the engine won't stall. The clutch itself is a wear item. It's similar to your brake pads in a lot of ways. And over time, it needs adjustment and ultimately replacement. Today we're going to look at how to do your regular maintenance service checks to make sure that the clutch itself is up to snuff for when you're riding. Let's start by looking at what is free play and why you need free play. What exactly is free play? When a mechanic or another rider talks about adjusting free play, what are they really talking about? I guess the first thing you need to understand is free play really talks about or is really related to motorcycles that use these, the old style metal cables in, in sheathing here to either control your throttle or in this case on the DR650, your clutch. One of the interesting things about motorcycles that have control cables like this is that when you turn the handlebars a little bit, the actual inner cable inside these control sheaths can move a little bit. It's not a lot, but it can be enough that if you don't have any free play in the cable, it can actually actuate the function that that cable is connected to. So in the case of your clutch, if you don't have any free play, when you turn the handlebars, there's the potential that you could introduce a little bit of slippage into the clutch itself every time you're turning, especially if you're doing really tight turns, and that would lead to premature wear on your clutch. In the case of your throttle, I've heard of people that don't have any free play in their throttle and they turn the handlebars and actually the engine will accelerate at, without putting any twist on the throttle itself. Now free play is basically a little bit of slop left in the system. In the case of the throttle here, you can see I can turn the throttle tube, oh, I don't know, maybe a 64th of, uh, of, I don't know, of a turn or something like that, or an eighth of a turn before I actually start to lift up the, the, the butterfly on the carburetor on this bike. The clutch is the same thing. There's a little bit of wiggle room between pulling the clutch and actually pulling on the control arm down at the bottom where the clutch actually lives. So you put a little bit of pressure on the lever, it doesn't actually actuate the clutch down below, at least until you overcome that free play. Again, clutches are wear items. So over time, that free play can disappear on your clutch lever and it needs to be adjusted and it's really simple. It's really easy to do. Let's take a quick look at the lever itself because there's really two places that you can adjust this. Um, the lever is probably the first place to look at to make micro adjustments. And if you wanna make bigger adjustments, there's another, another cable adjustment here. Okay, let's look. Clutch free play on the DR650 is measured at the lever ball out here. Now, with the lever sitting in its natural position with no pressure on it, you can take a measurement with a ruler. Then you pull in on the lever until you just ever so slightly feel that the cable slack has been picked up. Measure to the outside of the ball again, and that should be somewhere between 10 and 15 millimeters of free play. It's a fairly wide gap, actually. It sounds like a small amount, but that's quite a bit of lever play. If you find that your free play on your clutch is either too much or too little, there are two places on the DR650 where you can adjust that. 
Now the first one is right here underneath this rubber cover on the lever assembly itself. Let's take a look at that. When you pull the rubber boot back, what you're going to see down there is a threaded furl. Now this threaded furl is held in place with a small lock ring and you can adjust both of these normally just with your fingers as long as someone hasn't locked it down too tight with pliers. What this threaded furl does is introduces either length or shortness into the cable housing itself depending on whether you thread it in or thread it out of the clutch lever assembly. This is usually enough adjustment for the life of the clutch to actually adjust lever free play as the clutch wears. If however you find that there just is not enough adjustment there, there is a second location just down the cable itself about 10 centimeters. Now this adjuster is much more robust and requires tools to actually adjust it. Normally you're going to need two 10 millimeter wrenches and a 12 millimeter wrench to break free the lock nut and then using the wrenches you can adjust the cable length either in or out. But again, oftentimes that adjuster is really only used when a new clutch pack is put into the bike. Why don't we now take a look at how to actually adjust free play and measure it. So let's get to work on that. Instead of using a ruler, I actually find it a little easier to use a storyboard here. So I'll get a piece of scrap wood, whether it's a paint stick or what I have here, just a piece of straight wood, and I'll make a mark at the lever ball. I'll scribe that across with a square, and then using my tape measure, I'll make a mark at 10 millimeters and then 15 millimeters towards the bar end of the wood. I'll scribe that line across with a square, making these lines as clean and crisp as I can. And this is the beginnings of our storyboard. It's a little more accurate, I find, a little easier to use than trying to hold a tape measure up. So here we go, 10, 15 millimeters. Now, I'm going to take this storyboard and I'm going to press it back up against the lever. And now I can gently move the lever back and forth without actually taking up the free play that's in there. And you can see I only have maybe a couple millimeters, maybe five millimeters at best before the cable actually starts. So I'm going to loosen off the jam nut on the furl here and I'm actually going to turn the inner furl clockwise so it threads into the lever body. What this does is it actually makes the inner cable a little bit longer in relation to the cable sheath. Now I'll go back and I'll check again and let's have a look. Okay, that gives us our 10 millimeters, which is within spec, and that makes the clutch free play acceptable. I'll come back in and tighten down the lock nut, and then I'll just cover that back up with the rubber boot, and it's good. Now, if I couldn't get enough adjustment here, I could come up on the bar and adjust this larger furl, which is in line on the cable, uh, cable sheathing itself. Now, you need a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter wrench to first break free the lock nut that holds this adjuster in place. Feed a bit of slack in there and then using two 10 millimeter wrenches, you can turn these two furls in or out, lengthening or shrinking the cable length, the actual sheath length. Now I'm not gonna do this because it's already adjusted, but I did wanna show you how this works. Once you get the free play you need, you come back in and you simply just lock down that 12 millimeter nut, but again, Normally you won't have to do this unless you replace the entire clutch pack. So this looks pretty good. That's it. It's that easy to adjust the clutch free play on your DR650. There is a couple things to make note of though, and that is if you put on a different set of levers other than the factory levers, that may impact the overall free play measurement. In other words, a shorter lever is going to actually have less travel in it to get the same amount of free play. So a two finger lever may only need six to 10 millimeters of actual free play adjustment versus the stock longer lever. So just think about that. In terms of scheduling, how often should you be adjusting your clutch? Well, 
the manual does say that you should be adjusting it as necessary. The reason they say that is some people use the clutch a little more aggressively than other people. Especially if you're off-road, you may slip the clutch quite a bit and it may require more adjustment more frequently than a person who spends more time on the street. As a general rule, the manual says to check it after the first 1,000 kilometers of riding and then every 5,000 kilometers after that. And that's a baseline. For me, that means at least once a year, and if I notice that the free play is getting a little bit sort of tight, I'll adjust it as I want. And the nice thing is you can do that anywhere with just that knurled adjuster. Okay, that pretty much wraps up this episode. I really do hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, by all means, leave a comment. You can like, and if you want to, you can even subscribe to the channel and then you get to see this handsome mug more frequently. But until then, I got a couple more things I need to do on the DR, so I'm gonna get back to work. Thank you so much, you have yourself a nice day, and I'll see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. All right, back to work.